because that's going to screw up your Iranian living in London. Um, superb player. I'm not that familiar with Aikut's uh, game, but again, he is the de defending champion, and, and we're uh, providing him the honor of uh, playing in the first well, match. We start, now, on, uh, on uh, stream two, which is on the Ace Point Backgammon channel, will be a match between uh, Michael Vardanyan from Russia and uh, George Rabahi from Lebanon. Now, since everyone else is playing, <laughs> this is a Swiss format, no one's been eliminated yet, uh, we won't have a live commentary on stream two. But it is a good, a very good match, a couple of good players. Vardanyan's a superb player from Russia. Rabahi uh, recently finished in the semifinals of the uh, high roller jackpot in uh, Monte Carlo. And here, RF Alapur from UK slash Iran and uh, Aikut Uzel from uh, Ankara. So we are off and running. This is a Swiss format, nine point rounds. There'll be two rounds played tonight, this one at 8 p.m. local time and a second one at 10 p.m. local time. And then we'll begin again uh, the third round tomorrow morning. Okay, so these guys, uh, some nice early uh, structural development on both sides of the board. 6-3. Now, Arif has a couple of options here he does have the opportunity to to run from the rear but he's going to play two down trying to uh, build a bit of a prime to contain the that one back checker okay And again, this is, uh, they've had this tournament once before, two years ago, but Patrick Jabelli is the director, organizer, impetus behind it, and uh, this is going to be, it's a great tournament this year, and it's going to really, I think, uh, grow tremendously in the future as he's got a great vision and energy uh, toward this tournament. And um, I'm trying to follow this and talk at the same time here. 6-4 by Arif, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a beautiful venue, and, it, you know, it was announced a couple of days ago, and now everyone, every player, as if they didn't have the typical incentive to win the tournament, now they're all even more excited to, to perhaps win the tournament, because the, the two finalists, the finalists of the uh, Dubai Oasis International Bagamon Cup will be played at the top of the Burj Khalifa here in Dubai. So the tallest building in the world. Uh, we're going to be on the 123rd floor. Uh, we will be there with the live stream. Now here, here's an interesting uh, kind of a pressure cube from my perspective. Uh, it's a double and a take according to XG, but doubles from the, from the bar. But he does have a broken six prime in front of... Uh, RS2 trailing checkers. So, uh, you know, that was the, the type of cube, I think. Oftentimes, uh, you know, I, I don't know that these gentlemen have played or really are familiar with each other's game, but that's a, a bit of a perhaps a, a test cube, too, early in a match. And, again, these are only nine-point matches, and, and sometimes those... Um, you know, that's a, a sh much shorter match than perhaps we see in some other tournaments. But, uh, again, this is a Swiss format, which lends itself to the shorter matches. But, again, uh, kind of an early cube from uh, from I Aikut and uh, Aikul. Aikut. Hmm, get that right. We uh, get in uh, not as familiar with some of the names and other cultures sometimes, and I have to kind of struggled to to get used to saying them but uh, 
anyway, the the normal incentives are are there, but now this year playing atop the Burj Khalifa, and uh, wow, that's that's going to be exciting. Now, any number of sponsors of this tournament, of course, you can see some of them on the board there. And in addition, the what Domin Markets is a investment in a firm here in the UAE and a, a primary sponsor. And of course, we're using uh, the Baggammon Galaxy YouTube channel for for Stream One, and we certainly appreciate their contribution in that regard uh, stream two is on the ace point youtube channel there's ian saying he saw i in uh in scope at the recent uh wbgf tournament and uh again he's the uh defending champion in this tournament so uh and ian follows uh the backgammon world quite closely and is really familiar with a lot of the skills of the better players and if uh, if he says i could is a great player then uh, then i'll take that to the bank and of course i am personally familiar with r falapur and he is a superb player so this should be an interesting and uh, entertaining match again as i said we uh we appreciate uh Justin Knoll will be providing uh, transcription services on uh, Stream 1 throughout the week. So you will have the live XG feed. Now, as most of you, many of you perhaps know, I like to, to do the commentary in a bit of an interactive fashion. So if you have uh, questions, comments, suggestions, critiques, whatever... Um, I'm following the chat line and we'll try to respond as I can and as appropriate. So, uh, so uh, be sure and uh, comment anything you'd like. Jonathan Hardegree, Gary Olson, Bernhard, Mayor, thank you uh, for viewing. Again, uh, you know, it was kind of interesting because, again, we were affording. IQ Uzel the um, the honor of playing on stream one in the initial uh, in the initial round so uh, who knows who he draws right and perhaps to his uh, dismay in certain regards and but to our benefit as viewers he draws our Falapur. so uh, what a what a match okay so uh, kind of a standoff game here both are looking for the opportunity to, to uh, you know pass beyond their uh, their opponents outfield anchor okay so again uh, both uh, both players have the superb home board so you don't want to you know, offer up the shot voluntarily. And if you get forced to do it, then so be it. So here, Alarf, you know, again, he's just going to clear this, I guess, and he'll save a five by not moving off the six. So that uh, perhaps buys him yet another roll um, in not leaving uh, not leaving a blot. Now, uh, Gazelle has the same requirement of rolling a... Uh, Two numbers above three and likewise he doesn't accomplish that either so again he could play two probably two checkers to the ace he's going to clear the six though which uh, is reasonable enough if he does uh, uh, end up leaving a shot okay so any ace he's slightly behind uh, in the race here It's a direct miss. R for the two pip lead. Now eleven. You know, and I, I didn't uh, pay attention to it at the time, but. Uh, the uh, 
that's somewhat, from my perspective, seemingly an early cue from Uzel from the bar, um, was correct. And, of course, it was a relatively easy take by, uh, by Arif. And, uh, you know, beyond uh, withstanding some, some great rolling by, uh, well, it's almost even here. It's a little deceptive to look at, but uh, both will have ideally 10 checkers after this roll. So if Arf stays uh, holding serve, as it were, by, uh, you know, both of them not rolling doublets, then Arf should, uh, should close out this game. Our one of our favorite viewers is always following us, Mrs. Bubbles, from Switzerland, I believe. Okay, so Arif obviously uh, contemplating. Does he have a recube here? And again, it's ten checkers apiece. Um, probably no misses in his future, but, uh, you know, that's a five roll position with no misses in either side. It's probably, uh, I think it's a no redouble and obviously a take, but, uh, and what is it? Redouble pass according to, uh, to XG bill would have, uh, would have been wrong here. Now, players this caliber obviously will take the time necessary to to run through their calculations and reference positions and so forth before uh, before acting, particularly in cube play. And oh, is that nice? Takes uh, I, I think it's a deceptive one go, and then he gets uh, someone says Ian says mega punished, and that's right. He. Uh, he got slapped seriously. And, uh, you know, such are the uh, vagaries and fortunes of backgammon. 6-5, so that's what we call two points for, uh, or four points, I'm sorry, for, for Arif. Now, again, in this Swiss format, we uh, comparatively short matches, uh, nine-pointers. And and this is a three-life with format you're you're not uh, you can win the tournament with two losses so the last person standing with less than three losses is the champion for those that um, you know fall out along the way there is a last chance uh, flight on uh, Sunday okay set of nice sixes And said, you know, it's interesting. One thing that you know separates perhaps the this experienced players, the the very accomplished players, is uh, you know they they take the necessary risk where those are uh, required, and and there initially, and I thought he was going to stay with that play. Um, you know, I could seriously consider stepping up into that uh, quasi blitz type situation that uh, Arif had uh, beginning, but it, but it, you know, with the structure as it were, uh, staying back against that developing uh, advance by Arif is uh, is difficult to win from. He's gonna have to pick that up. So now he's got four builders working on the five point. So that's the. <laughs> you know, Tara just stepped out here, and obviously, uh, in this Swiss format, getting matches kicked off, and with this FTBG system, uh, we don't have um, we don't have access to the pairings until 
until the pairings are posted in effect. So, you know, we like to have a, a bit of time on occasion to select, choose our matches, you know, re review the pairings and, uh, and, and, and select our pairings. And uh, now here, here's another interesting cube. I like the timing. Uh, I could has three back behind, um, you know, a seriously broken prime. But he also has two checkers behind, uh, or Arf has two checkers behind uh, Iqut's five prime. Arf takes it. So this is going to be interesting. Now, what does Arf roll, or uh, Iqut roll? That's a tough roll, but he's going to play the probably six in and five to the, or six to the one in the five and hits two. But now, even if, uh, I don't know that I'd hit two. I, I don't like that. Uh, I'd keep the five prime in uh bank on uh, let him come in with the uh, you know you might hit one but let him come in with the one checker and uh, you know anything other than perhaps a one six um he's gonna have to crunch somewhat on the other side i i i don't like this play myself what does xg say to that uh, i think uh it wanted ten four eight three which is what i would have played i think so so again that was a I didn't look at the XG feed, but judging on the PR uh, change there, that was fairly significant error by uh, by RF or by I'm getting them mixed up again. I could you don't uh, haven't commentated anything since Monte Carlo, so it takes a little bit of time to get back in the flow here. Now. I did tell him Justin's doing transcription. This is going to be uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Gage got no now. Our, uh, I could just need to get one of those checkers out. Gets one out. He could put. Uh, he can. This is probably a good play. He he still has the opportunity to get. Uh, get those checkers moving he can move the ones in the back with what uh four five six one threes and fours to come from the uh set of threes which is really kind of interesting because that uh you know again he's got the two checkers trapped behind the five prime so he's in uh you know, in jeopardy of, um, he doesn't roll a six. He's in de jeopardy of uh, crunching here. Five one, he can step up onto that. So he, he has an anchor and he has them both positioned to be able to escape with a six. I could needs a, a four or a six to, to get one of those rear checkers out. Okay. There's the, the beginning of the crunch. Now, Again, this next roll is is just incredibly crucial to to this game. Mr. Finneran is in the house, say Bill. Um, you know, because we can see what happens if on I uh, I could roll here. If he doesn't roll a four or six, then he's going to have to break that five prime. Okay, a four five, so that gets him to go. And now, if now he's got kind of inadvertently in sorts. Uh, a bit of a trap play uh, established here. Um, you know, he can survive one more roll before he, he rolls a six, perhaps. But when he does roll a six, um, barring it not being a double six, then, um, you know, then he's going to be attacked. Okay, so he's probably just going to move them both off the six. You you don't want to leave two blights over there by hitting on the ace. Okay, I'm br I'm bringing. Uh, I don't know. I might have stayed back and fished for that third checker. Um, Okay. 
Well, you're right, Ian. And of course, uh, Arf did roll the three two, or the two one to point. Now he rolls the three two. Five three. I think I, uh, hmm, what did I do? I play to the, play to the four and the 12. He's going to play it all the way to the deuce. XG wanted him to play the trap even uh, more seriously from that point. Three, one. Yeah, and keep the 6-6. Six, six. That's the minimized shots. So six, two, and a 6-6. Six, six. Had you moved the back one, you'd have four shots rather than three. Okay, with that uh, relatively advanced anchor, um, well, I'm going to say Akut is in a relatively decent position to perhaps win too, but he is 21 pips down before that roll, so he's going to have a 10-pip lead. So... Uh, it's kind of tricky sometimes um, exactly how to proceed. Now, if, if again, if R rolls a six, then uh, I could can attack. Doesn't roll the six. Mm Okay, there's the pointing number. Oh, he went running in there. The door's closed. Okay, so looking to close it out there there it is not a lot of gammons in the cup with only uh, one back and one in the outfield so uh, you know probably uh, should coast home perhaps with a two point uh, two point win here so again that was kind of an interesting uh, game in my opinion the say uh interesting cube and, and it's again first round in a swiss format two gr very good players and uh, we're 7.77 and 6.89 so neither are playing to their to their norm but uh you know pr doesn't count it's uh swiss formats just wins Arf rolled a couple of big numbers here. He could have gotten back into it, but there's still some potential misses uh, for I could. There's one, you know, play to the ace. Five, four. So most improbable that uh, I could would lose this. So here's the uh, probably the closeout roll. There it is. Well, he could. Uh, he, there's two ones, three ones, double ones. So uh, Arif may have two rolls, but uh, needed sets on both of them. So four two, Arif. Now, this is, uh, and it's kind of interesting, talking to Patrick Jabelli somewhat, the director, organizer. I mean, this is at a Hyatt Regency in uh, in Dubai. Uh, a large, beautiful um, playing room venue. And Patrick says, you know, that's um, for whatever reason, and we didn't get into that, but very few of the 
hotels in Dubai have large um, ballrooms suitable for a, for a large tournament. So uh, that kind of uh, dictated his selection of this hotel. Um, you know, he said it's kind of interesting, and apparently, and this has been renovated, I think, and expanded. It's, it's really a quite a nice facility. Um, but apparently it was one of the early large Western hotels in, uh, in Dubai. And, um, you know, it's now, it's, it's kind of away from the, it's out closer to the international airport, uh, and probably eight to 10 miles from the city center of dubai as we know it and see it nowadays with uh you know all the high-rise buildings and and so forth but uh, very nice facility and again it was built early on and i say early on we can laugh about that i think it was in the mid to late 80s some fashion but uh, apparently a, a number of uh i don't know uh elite class of sorts or both based on you know lineage or wealth or what have you used to uh, have a lot of weddings here and uh, that was why they this one hotel had this one big huge incredible ballroom uh, was for weddings and apparently it uh, has maintained that uh, tradition of sorts and there are a lot of weddings here but it's a beautiful facility, and uh, there's two two towers, more or less. There's a hotel, and there's a um, condo residence tower, and uh, a shopping mall with an ice rink and all that kind of stuff between and beneath them. So, uh, enjoyable. You can see the participating players, and I had meant to mention this earlier, so I'm glad you prompted me. Um you go to f f t b g system dot com f t b g system dot com and you go to that and and actually you'll see a recent Cypress tournament initially but scroll on down and you'll find the um, this tournament both the advanced division and the well, in the States, we would call the championship division in Europe and here in Dubai, they call it the master's division. But um, you go to that and at first you'll see a name list, but you scroll on down past the uh, name list and you'll see the pairings, the first round pairings here. Okay, so again... Uh, Aikut's built a, a nice uh, structure, but he doesn't have anything to contain, as uh, Arf has managed to escape both of those. So Aikut's going to have to depend on that 18-point uh, to some degree to uh, to try to pick up a checker. Four three. So I mean, what are his options? He could play them both inside but that leaves two blots what's the count he's up by four so that's not particularly significant to the considerations um okay he's going to play it like that but that leaves all three outfield points stripped so uh, he's subject to uh, an unattracted forced move with uh, with a bad roll Or two, he's just going to, or what was that, four one, I guess, I'm sorry. So he just plays that off the six point, so he's still kind of treading water a bit with those three uh, stripped outfield points and not much flexibility otherwise. Five, four, again, he can go to the ace point, he can clear the eight point, but uh, then that's just, to some degree, worsening his continuing problem. Three one, so the uh, the hotel is ready for visitors over here on uh, I could side sixes. That moves a lot of freight and uh, has some certain attractiveness. But he's got these two lonesome guys out here on the midpoint, which, but uh, I could, I was going to say, is probably going to be forced to to give up one of those. He he can't because it included an ace and uh, RF has a five point board. 
for one again he doesn't have to crunch he doesn't have to leave a shot so uh, anything without an ace and uh, I could can clear that midpoint okay so he can't uh, he can't come down he had he had he rolled a number which would allow him to safety one of them he may have had some minor temptation to leave a shot but he couldn't leave two yeah greg thank you ftbgsystem.com now i think uh you know, reasonable numbers here i think patrick had a had hoped to, to have a few more players than he did, and, and I actually anticipated, based on some of the, I don't know, um, talk, if you will, in the uh, in the backgammon community. But uh, I think we ended up with 169 in the Masters slash Championship Division. Um, and I didn't look recently at the, uh, the Intermediate Division, but it was in the 50 to 60 range. So... Um, you know, well over 200 players combined, which, um, you know, is is double perhaps what it was. Uh, and there, again, score dictated somewhat, but, uh, okay, he's going to pay now. Well, he has to pay now. It is 11 shots versus 17. He misses. So now he's just got to... Hope he can uh, hope he can outroll uh, our affair. And again, it's rather interesting. Even with that, uh, well, there, there's those big numbers he needed right there. So it's uh, he's right back in the game, very close. In fact, he's got a nine pip lead, but he's down a down a checker. There's uh, now he's down five checkers, <laughs> but uh, you know he has has a gap there, which may cost him a bit. But, uh, you know, that's how uh, backgammon is. It, uh, backgammon giveth and uh, backgammon taketh away. Sometimes uh, I could get back in the, in the game with the set of sixes, but then, uh, you know, what oftentimes might be a rather uh, innocuous set of twos um, gave him a pretty substantial advantage immediately thereafter. Again, we uh, hasn't froze here, Shay. Perhaps you. Uh, we've got like eighty megabyte upload here, so we've got tremendous uh, bandwidth. So perhaps you can uh, refresh your uh, your browser or something and correct any problem you might be having. Eddie Towel, New York City. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Okay, a set would help. Not in the end of the world if he doesn't get it, but it's close to the end of the world if he does get it. Now, RF needs threes, doesn't get it. Four to four, five point match. Uh, most interesting. Most interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a nice board. Uh, Eddie and uh, those are all and I'm not sure the manufacturer's name I, I should know that I'll have to get that from uh, from Patrick but they uh, maybe FM Gammon makes it I know in certain respects some of the components of it these uh, I know the new um, inlays that include the uh, it's the name of that bunch, Damon uh, Damon Markets logo on it. Those were uh, manufactured, printed here in Dubai. But uh, I'm not sure if the board frame and structure itself, and it's obviously table boards, if that was, uh, I know they have a relationship with FM Gammon. But uh, I, I'm not sure if that was uh, where those were originally constructed or not. Julie Tabo, what's up? Now, 
now as we can uh, as we're watching it and it's kind of interesting because uh you know and and again it's it's difficult to to stereotype in any way but you know i could being a Turkish from Ankara and uh, Arif being all of the living in the UK now and a Londoner uh, is originally from Iran and they both play with uh, with pace and uh, you know I've see, seen on occasion I mean neither are seem to be maybe Justin asked them to pause for a second uh, with a transcription error or something but uh, that's probably what this delay is he's sitting right there next to them but uh, they both seem to play with pace. Uh, certainly, uh, I, I noted uh, a time or two where uh, Arf had uh, perhaps a bit of a uh, you know tough cube decision, maybe a tough checker player too, and you know, and, and he's willing to use the time necessary uh, judiciously, but. Uh, they're both, uh, neither of them are particularly, you know, slow players in any regard. And again, I think that's perhaps, uh, um, they probably grew up playing, um, oddly, if you will, or a variation such as that. And, uh, it's a very rapid paced game. So there's probably some vestiges of that in their play. Okay. And this is a, a bit of an awkward roll. I I like that. You could, Arf has uh, only two point, only a two point board. So uh, you know, if he hits, he can't do uh, too much immediate damage. And uh, I could has uh, every potential of making a an anchor relatively quickly, and he does. Okay, we look at XG there, no double tag. Yes, Julie, I, I miss Olivier. I mean, that was a lot of fun, and uh, I think uh, Julie refers to uh, Olivier de Coteau uh, commentating with me on a doubles match in uh, Monte Carlo, which involved a, a French team, and... Uh, that was a blast. I had a good time. Uh, Olivier and I are good friends. He speaks passable English, but, uh, you know, he, he used a lot of French in that, and, and I think that was great. Yeah, Victor did cancel, Ian. Um, said it's too hot there at their uh, home in uh, Paros. It's an island in the Greek Isles. You know, it's interesting, and, and George uh, Kyriakos was uh, commenting on the checkers, and, uh, you know, we all have different color perceptions and this, that, and the other. These are, uh, yeah, and and, and I, I have no problem with them at all, and I think the logos help that somewhat. But, uh, you know, there was another, and I don't even know, a recent tournament that had a... Uh, you know, red and black pips and red and black checkers, and uh, it was really difficult. But those were, I think, the uh, the reds were much more similar in color. And uh, here, I, and again, the logos have something to do with it, but I, I'm not having any problem with losing any checkers on the uh, on pips and viewing the board. Okay, so now it'd be kind of this is going to be a difficult one to uh, <laughs> to survive here. <clears throat> Uh, 
Ours probably uh, got plenty of timing. Alex is shaking from L.A. Hello, sir. Good to see you. As we can see there, and, and again, uh, perhaps not surprisingly, I know in the, through the first game they were both playing seven plus, um, and I could has not been able to chisel into that PR much, but uh, RF is down in the I don't recall there it is four one one range, so that's uh, probably much nearer his norm, maybe a little high for him actually, but uh, you know I could is. Uh, you know, not having the good fortune to play anywhere close to what his uh, average PR probably is. Okay, now this is good because, uh, you know, 11's a fairly good roll, um, fairly sizable roll. I coot would just like to uh, burn some time, and he did with the 6 1, obviously. He's at a 5-4, so he's going to bring that around. I'm with you, Ian. I was probably blabbering too much about something else and didn't uh, pay that close of attention to the uh, to the cube. Okay, so uh, Ars going to try to be careful bringing these in. I could, uh, he'd like to roll big to maintain a bit of a, much of a board as he could. And of course, uh, was fortunate in doing so, but he, Arf gets to uh, sustain the, the six prime here. Okay, so uh, Aikut is uh, uh, holding on as well as one might can uh, in this position. Now he needs a five to uh, to maintain some uh, homeboard integrity, and he loses that, and it's going to be very, very difficult to win this, although, uh, you know, the best number from his perspective for Arf. And uh, so he uh, escapes the uh, RF escapes the you know, one blot. There's Okay, so he's uh, torn as to actually how to play this. He aren't, aren't too many options. Uh, you know, he'd like to have played perhaps a little bit differently and save some potential for... Uh, You know, to perhaps the, the achieve a gammon, but I don't think you know there aren't many gammons in the cup, and just needs to play safely. I always like to recognize uh, people in the community contributing to the community and Alex Shagan is watching us uh, tonight participating in the commentary and, or not in the commentary in the chat line and certainly uh, and I'll forgive uh, or apologize to Alex for not remembering the exact name of his new book on back games but that just came out and uh, I know he spent a serious amount of time and uh, 
writing and refining and now publishing that book. So uh, thank you for the community, Alex, for what you do in that regard. Back game and back game strategy. There you go. And that's, I know, available on uh, on Amazon. So, uh, okay. So now I could just, uh, you know, he's just going to save the gammon and uh, has every likelihood of doing so. Yeah, that's what I would think, Demetrius Arsh and uh, 3X range and he's playing. You know, he's, he's worked it down quite a bit, so he's he's approaching his uh, his norm, I guess. Uh, I could, I think, is probably playing a bit high for him himself, but uh, it's been a fun and interesting match. Now, as y'all can see, uh, and I should have mentioned this earlier, of course. Uh, you know, R's playing the black checkers at the top of the board, and he's on the right side of your player cam there in the white shirt. I, I could, uh playing red at the bottom of the board, and he's on the left in the black shirt. So uh, both uh, relatively young, very personable, um, nice guys. Okay, so this is... Uh, foregone conclusion now this game is going to end so it's going to be six to four rf three away five away for those who uh take that perspective in games it's kind of interesting they had some side events and warm-up events and so forth starting today starting today his clock is running, but fortunately, there he stopped it. So he, he lost very little time, and they both have a, a lot of time. They're going to take a bit of a break. Now, perhaps uh, Tar can switch us over to while well, they're taking a break, and we can see what's happening on, uh, on stream two. Again, over there, who did we have? Michael Vardanian from, uh, from Russia. Very good player and super nice guy. I've known for a number of years. Oh, there she is, the double, uh, the double screen, uh, two up. She calls it. So there we have Vardanian with a five-four lead, and judging on the position of the cups, uh, they decided to take a break at the same time. But we uh, can see that uh, Vardanian is leading uh, five to four over George Rabahi from uh, Lebanon. Um, so, uh, two, whoop, they didn't change the score. Apparently, Tara's going to correct it for us. Uh-oh. Turning, turning, turning. <laughs> okay, 9-4 Vardanian. So, uh, so much for a break. They they took the, uh, the permanent break. <laughs> did... did Hasn't that title been uh, claimed any number of times? I, I don't know, Tim, if uh, if if that is uh, a real book from you or not. And if so, I apologize. I'm not familiar with it, but I can imagine that any number of us might have been able to uh, to author it. Congratulations, Michael or Mikhail. I guess you would is appropriate. Congratulate me too. Hey, did you win? Look here, old Phil. I won. Usually come when I, I usually come when I'm losing, but this still, time uh, yeah, that's one of the things about some of these quick matches. Uh, you know, you got and there's fixed start times on each round. I course. love so, this, this FTG system is incredible. Yeah, so everybody should do it. Phil Simborg joining us here. Um, Hello, everybody. Another one of the Americans here uh, in Dubai. So. Uh, going to be an interesting tournament i think this is a, a tournament of the uh, growth for the future i think and it's in a new area and uh, patrick certainly has the energy and the vision to uh to make it successful i came because i thought it would be a real easy draw 
But then I looked at, <laughs> I looked at the list, and it's just filled with giants. <laughs> I had a very tough first match, too. Jan Djokovic uh, from oh, yeah. Germany. Is very I recall tough. that you had drawn in. Djokovic is a very good player. Uh, yeah. He, how, did, how did you win? Uh, I won with an 8 cube. <laughs> I'm serious. I, 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 it, it was not a coup cl uh, classique, but I hit his. He had two checkers left that I hit, and I kept uh, recirculating until I hit the second checker. Then I closed it out, and I took three off. And I was winning five to four, holding a two cube with three checkers off, and I recubed him to four. And he took, and I really got to put that in because I think that was a pass. And then he recubed me immediately to eight, and I got lucky. Arif. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, we're. We're off chatting on other things now while y'all are uh, taking a break. But uh, a good a good match. <laughs> so who's playing Ara and I'm Araf and um, Aikut Uzil? Oh, sure. From uh, Ankara, Turkey, he won this event. Uh, he's yeah, a defending Aikut's champion. Good. Aikut's very good. They're both very good. And it, it was kind of funny because we were going to uh, stream Aikut as an honor for being the defending champion regardless of who he drew and uh so you know who knows right it could have been well, we made that same mistake in monte carlo if you'll recall yeah well, i we, do recall yeah we, <laughs> we streamed we streamed sander and he's playing this beginner and it would have been a horrible match except the beginner won <laughs> <laughs> well here we uh, fortunately uh, we get a great match with rf being pan yeah, paired sure. against uh uh Ihoot and um Wow. Well, I'll stick around until my next match. Cause it, yeah, we, uh, this, this what, to me is more relaxing than playing. <laughs> what time is it anyway? I don't even see. It's Here, I got right it. now it's five to, uh, five to eight. Yeah, so we got an hour and five minutes. That's the next great. round is 10 local time. That's great. And uh, so it'll be fun. I was very impressed with the opening ceremony. It was very classy and well done. They have great sponsors here. And then he pulled out those cakes. He had a whole bunch of these cakes. He's had every single player's name on each cake. Yeah, there amazing. were ten cakes. Ten cakes to get all the players' and, names. And uh, all the players' names were. Uh, now, did wow. you? I had a piece of cake for did sure. Did you have a piece of your own? Oh cake yeah. No, not my own. No. no. <laughs> I I wouldn't have done. I would I, I would rather eat mochi or. <laughs> it's my favorite ice cream. Hey, remember where we are now, Phil? Oh, I wasn't yeah. talking about anything uh, anything off color. I like mochi ice cream. We, it's my we favorite. Need to, uh, Exercise from discretion, <laughs> innuendo, but uh, nonetheless, it, it was. It was a, a nice opening. Uh, Patrick's put a tremendous amount of uh, time, energy, money, and work, I guess, in, in, into this tournament. Hey, look, and, anybody uh, who's, who cares enough to re do it right and have you and Tara here, that proves that you, he cares about the tournament and, and cares about the the viewers and the and the growth of the game. Well, we certainly appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. I mean, this is the this is the classiest streaming in the history of Beck. I mean, it's great, and I'm I'm thrilled to be a part of it with you guys. Well, we uh, we enjoy it. I know, um, you know, we had the opportunity to work together considerably in Monte Carlo, and and I think that was a huge success for everyone. Uh, I think and, I think uh, we're up to over fifty thousand views of the final. Match. Yeah, we're up uh, close to sixty thousand now. To sixty thousand uh, yeah. in. Five or six weeks, whatever it is, yeah. Which is essentially the same number as have viewed in thirteen months or something. Uh -huh. The the Sander uh, Zidenic yeah I final from last year. I can't believe that many people watch it. I mean, I had uh, Mark Olson and Wilcox Snelling doing the commentary with me, and I thought that would take away from it some because I wouldn't get to talk <laughs> as much. But people went to watch it anyway. I can't understand that. I. You know, I've only got to do a third of the talking. Yeah. So, uh, most, uh, uh, again, that was great. And we ended up, you know, and it's kind of funny because as, as many big names were there, and this is not to, uh, you know, reflect in any way. Frigo was a defending champion, or not a defending champion, a former champion. Former champion, yeah. And um, Mario Kuhl was perhaps not as well known as a lot of players, but... Uh, Boy, did he put on a performance all week in the super yeah. high roller in the in the main? I can't remember anybody playing that well and losing in the finals since Bob Wachtel. I think Wachtel played under three and lost in the finals. And Joe Russell in his second match played very, very well. But I think he played around three. With um, uh, Jorgen. Yeah, with Jorgen Grandstead when Jorgen won it the third time. 
Uh, so, I, I mean, to play that well and lose is, is almost a, a sad, and it's a testament to how how uh, how tough he is to when you're losing. It's hard to keep playing and keep your concentration that well. But you know, it's interesting, and, and again, I, I love Frank Frigo and Mario Gould, and they put on a tremendous performance. Uh, it was a great match, but uh, you know, you would expect the kind of numbers we got if Mochi or Akiko or Victor or whomever. Maybe bigger names in certain regards were were in that, but yeah. Let me tell you, we got, I did, a, we got I, a great uh, performance, and I, uh, I didn't know much about Mario Cool before that tournament, and now he's going to be high on my Giants list in the future. Well, you know, the he, only he thing that I, I knew about him in advance of that was that in the New York Metro this year, he defeated uh, Victor in the final in the uh, high roller, in the high or roller. She calls it. Well, I had heard he was a great money player, but I know I know people who play money games and don't play too many tournaments. They they don't usually play under three PR like he did. Yeah, and and I didn't. I've heard this. I don't know for sure that, uh, that this is the case, but I understand he was, uh, you know, way back, and I say way back, 15, 20 years, he was, um, I don't know, owner, investor, CEO, something of that, play 65 backgammon, which was uh, right. fairly substantial. I guess oh, yeah. one of the things that really hurt it was when the U.S. cut back <laughs> on, uh, on the gambling. On the gambling. I represented play 65 in the United States. I thought it was great. It was it was a great platform at the time. Okay, so here we go, Phil. We're back on board. So Arif is winning six four three away five away is the way I think of it, which is a little bit strange. That this took me a while to understand why the leader has an, a lower take point than the trailer. The trailer actually has to drop a little bit faster if there's no gammons, which is really surprising at these scores, but you, it's because of Crawford and, and what one or two points does for you. So that makes it it's another illustration of why match play is so complicated compared to money play. Yeah, to catch up um, to Jurgen Kunkel's question, uh, you can go to FTBG system, ftbgsystem.com, and uh, see all the brackets, the player lists, and what have you. Yeah, when you win or lose, they scan your they scan your uh, uh, your your lanyard, code, yeah, yeah, your QR code, and they immediately put it in, and it goes on the website too. It's just an incredible. And then they tell you what table you go to it next time, and and you get playing. an automatic text when they do the the uh, oh, yeah. drawing. I I haven't been getting the text. That's not working, but maybe it will work for others. Did you download the app? Oh yeah, I've got okay. I've had the app from before. Ah, at the at uh, you stopped her. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so classic, what I call the midpoint standoff game, and uh, although with the holding the five point two, this is a pretty complicated game, but it just got uncomplicated. Or less complicated. <laughs> less complicated. Uh, yeah. What do you do here, Bill? I, I come but I come down from the mid. I don't need the midpoint so much anymore. I don't want to bury the checkers. Mm. I don't like this play at all. I, so I, I must tend be to be with you, Bill. And yeah. uh, I mean he's got to play over the next roll or two. I yeah. mean he can probably sustain one one uh, roll oh, such as that to clear you got the, the XG mid. feed. It said it was XG right by feed. a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't notice that. It was right by a lot to bring them all down. Okay. I'd like to cover up the XG feed. I can make more of a fool of myself that way. <laughs> Which is not a hard thing to do anyway. <clears throat> well, I, you know, it's great with you winning your, your first match. I was telling the viewers earlier i mean as if winning a tournament isn't always incentive enough for these players everybody wants to go to the burj khalifa <laughs> so the uh, the final will be played on top of the world as it oh, were oh my god and uh, are you, how we how are we going to do the commentary from there is it that's going to be tricky isn't it we're taking it all down there oh my god we're going to be doing uh, oh my god the streaming the and commentary remote oh my god uh, at the burj khalifa Tar and I were down there Friday with uh, Patrick Jabelli, and uh, we had a meeting at the yeah. at did, the location. Did you drive a truck from Texas to here with all your equipment? <laughs> it's it's amazing how much stuff you have to bring. 
to get all these different camera views and everything. It's just terrific. <clears throat> here's a <clears throat> here's a blunder if he makes this play. <clears throat> oh no, he made the right play. Okay. Yeah, you just got to kill checkers here. It's not fun. Uh, that's not too bad a play, breaking the eight. Too point. bad. Not too bad. I'm impressed with Acut. I've watched him before. He's a very good player. <clears throat> you know, now the first game or so, they, they both were up in the mid-sevens. Uh -huh. Aikut's worked it down somewhat. Arf has worked it down significantly from there. <clears throat> this roll is a nightmare, but you got to play it, and that's the right play. <clears throat> Even the fewest shots. And okay. he's he's very brittle too, so you don't want to break the back point. Not a double, but by a little bit. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty thin. Uh, well, if you were if the score was reversed, I'd double. Absolutely, and you would probably be right in doing so. For money, I would double too. Oh, that's interesting. Ian Terry was just telling us that uh, you know, David Klossel won the Skokie tournament yeah. here uh, yeah. a few weeks ago, and he said I could was the person that sent Klausa to the second chance, and then Klausa come back and won the tournament. That's great. David's a nice guy. I was happy to see him win. He was on he was on my uh, team uh, in Trier for representing the U.S. He's a good player and a nice guy. <clears throat> okay, so he's going to. Uh, Eights and nines. Rather than crunch in any fashion. Eights and nines. There's the eight. Uh, or split the mid. Yeah. Notice eight. how I said eight and nine before the roll. That's a very good thing for all intermediates to re learn. <laughs> that you don't miss shots that way. Call them out. And you can. Uh, now. And you can crow a bit if you were right and if yeah. you uh, were wrong. Yeah. Who expected you if to be you, right? No, if you're wrong, you hit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think this has got to be a pass. Big pass. Yeah, got to be a pass. There's, there's, uh, there's even some gammons involved with those three checkers on the outside. Oh yeah, there it is. Twenty-two percent gammons. Huge pass. And he doubled very quickly. I would double very yeah, slowly. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> um, Dimitri's giving you a little flack, you know. Dimitri loves to do that. And there's only one reason he does it. He knows he's smarter than I am. Okay, so... I would not waste my clock on this one. Now, now with the lead, you know, we're... At, uh, you know, we're even or something. I might think about it a bit more, but... Uh, it's too it's too easy to dance a roll or yeah. two and uh well it doesn't cost too much to think that's a good lesson <clears throat> but this doesn't seem to be close <laughs> let's see here i'm gonna play with some of my new toys and see how this works you know with those well now right, we passed. missed it but he, he had those two voids there so uh -huh. it was uh what we call a spaghetti percent <laughs> Uh, 55% to uh, enter, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you, hit you also dance 45% of the time, and he's bringing four checkers around against you. You had a lead. Okay, it's three away, four away. There's one really, really interesting thing about this score that I always keep in mind. If the leader doubles, his recube take point is 40%. So the leader really has to be a lot more careful doubling if there's much game to go. Because it's very hard to take the recube. Oh, I, I purposely was just making a point that, rather than dragging. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You getting in trouble with the wife again? Well, you know, <laughs> he, he tries to. We all know who the boss is here. We, we know who well, the boss and, is. And you work with us enough. You know she runs a tight production. Uh, uh -huh. She does a great job, too. But how does it feel to live with somebody who's always right? 
What's well, he doing? You can, he, you can ask he, that. Wait, you, oh, double twos. Okay. You can ask that of any man. <laughs> <laughs> he better say yes. <laughs> <laughs> So this is another tournament where you can lose and still win the mat tournament? You can lose once and still win? Huh? The tournament's so a double elimination? It's actually triple. Triple, okay. Three lives. You can lose twice and still win the tournament. Correct. Oh, good. Much more hope for me. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, and I'm not sure yet if we're uh, streaming it or not, but y'all might uh, check in with us in the morning. Uh, Mochi's giving a lecture at uh, 10 a.m. local, which is, uh, you know, for you people in the States, 1, 2, 3 a.m., it's no big deal. But... Uh, Will it be streamed and recorded? It will definitely be recorded. Uh -huh. uh, we're streamed. Good. It'll probably be recorded even if it's yeah. not streamed, but and we're I still trying to work out the details of that. And I see on Sunday, Zedek's going to give a lecture on the Cube. He What's is. What's Mochi's lecture about? Nah, I'm not sure. And Michi's giving one Saturday. Wow. Mochi, Michi, and Zedek giving lectures? I would come just for that. More at the price of admission. Huh? No question about it. I would come just to hear those three lectures. Three of the best in the world. And three authors, too. Three three, three very good authors. I just okay, love so what do we got here? So we got a 6-1 to play for Ara if he's... Uh, hmm. Well, XG I says you it. just stack the five point. Mm. That seems like a natural play. Okay. Is he thinking about hitting two? Hitting two is not uh, terrible, but it's certainly not right. Yeah, that's the that's the thought I would have also when I'm losing, and I don't blame him for making that mistake because that look that looks sexy. Huh? Yeah, you might ask him. <laughs> Once you uh, slot that ace point, you're supposed to make it nowadays. My girl would laugh at you in the old days. But now that you do it. Okay, and there's that now. I don't, this, I don't think this is a, a take even at the score. I, I, I'm, well, we, we know the game plan oh. from here if he, uh, there it is. if he sends it. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's going to be full speed ahead. Yeah, blitz it's, mode. It's blitz, and it's, it, it's too many gammons to take. There's enough wins here, but not a, there's just too many gammons. Now, with this score and this kind of play, I mean, someone like Arif's probably got this in his uh, reference position repertoire. I don't know. This doesn't look like a reference position to me with those two checkers back on the three. I would have a little trouble with it myself. Uh, but uh, he certainly did the right thing. It was an easy pass. Okay. Three away, three, three away. Three away, three away. Take points are 25% on the initial cube and 25% on the recube. I always think about those things at the beginning of every game. And the gammon value with the cube turned is 0.5. It's just important to get your mind set on these things so you don't miss a cube. I don't have those times in front of me, Tim. I'll get them for later. Um, Mochi's definitely 10 a.m. tomorrow. I think Michi's maybe 11 a.m. Uh, Zdenyuk's 10 a.m. on Sunday. Yeah. We may, we're, we're trying to work it out. Tar and I were trying to work it out where we could stream Zdenyuk before we break down and head to Burj Khalifa. And, uh, okay, so, now again, both of them, or are, are really just kind of looking Ooh. looking for any opportunity this is interesting. here. Do you yeah. hit? Do you hit or to make the point? Do you? Wow. I'm making the five. I think. Usually it's right to make the five here, but I would have some problem with this play. Good. Justin's a good transcriber too. He, you know, he, he's running at higher. Oh, five. Justin Knowles he's doing it. Justin Knowles yeah, he's great. doing the transcription. He's great. I mean, Patrick has. Uh, 
not spared any expense to get the best people here. He's got Mate here helping. He's got you and Tara and me. Uh, yeah, he's got Justin. Uh, Justin. A lot of people here on staff, and plus the whole the whole team of Fuat's team. Well, he, you know, he he played in uh, Monte Carlo. He stopped her this year. Oh. Uh, Jabelli did, uh -huh. and he was so impressed with that FTBG system that he just on the spot more than bought it for his tournament. The first time I saw it several years ago in Turkey, I tried to buy the system. Yeah. All right, at least license it for the right. entire world, and it just didn't work out because he wanted money. I mean, how how garish can you be to want money for something that you've developed? <laughs> Okay, so there's uh, there's a nice roll. Nine. So now it's just a question of where the where the fourth one is. Okay, but you got a two five back game, and especially at this score, you almost never double this game. This is always going to be a take. You can't lose your market unless unless he crashes his board. So this game is going to go without it should go without a cube for a long time. I like this play a lot. He's going to time this game. Well, this is interesting. Um, hmm. Come out. I would have come around. Oh, no. He's got three checkers on the five. He I would three checkers yeah, on the five. If he had two he checkers on the five, I would come exactly, around. Exactly. I would, too. But yeah, to, he doesn't have to give up the anchor to yeah. hit. I like teasing my opponent to come off his anchors. But this yeah, it's kind not of a tease. So what's it, what's he do here? He's got a any six, right? Yeah. So he plays. It's all reasonable. They're all. It's yeah, I doubt, and they weren't hugely no. uh, different. Two, three, so he can hit and point. Yeah. I, I don't like making the three point there. I'm, it was right, but I would have I would have been very tempted to just keep it loose, but it was right, so I'm wrong. Now he hit that one, and, I'm, and, and now Arif doesn't really mind that. He gets to recirculate some yeah. checkers while trying to build a board. This again, again, this game is going to build for. Uh, there's no market loser here. Why would he? He can't double. There's no market losers. Double three, uh, even double three. You still might have a take. Oh no! Ooh. Oh no! No double. This is a huge, huge take. Huge mistake. Pretty, pretty big mistake. I too. love holding the cube here with a two-five back game. That's reasonably well timed. That's I can't get. That's that's that was not good. Now as long as Arif can, uh, you know why he did that? Because to make me look bad, I said this game was going to go for a long time <laughs> without a cube, and he had to contradict me. Well, Arif just needs to be able to escape one or both of those spares on a five point yeah. just to, you know, for timing purposes. And uh, he's got a massive recube too. Well, twenty five percent is the recube take point, but he can redouble for the match. Pretty exciting. That's why it's so wrong to give him that kind of big. I like this play. I like this play too. So, and and it's the correct play. Yeah. So. You want to give your opponent some bad numbers to crack with. No. And this is uh, no. This this is burning. No. Pouring fuel on the fire. Yeah. Okay. Are the PRs being shown along the way? Yeah, they're in. Yeah. Three, eight, two, and six, five. Yeah. Just from what I've seen so far, Reef is really outplaying him. Oh, make the bar. Make that bar. That's a beautiful roll. Couldn't yes. ask for anything more. No, that's gorgeous. What else? The other reason it's right is that nothing else looks good. Now, to answer one gentleman's question, how can I watch other games? We're streaming two matches per round. Stream one, which this is, is on the uh, Galaxy, Baggam and Galaxy YouTube channel. Stream two is on the Ace Point Backgammon uh, YouTube channel. Do you have a commentator on stream too? We don't right now because everyone was playing. Oh, I, and I, that 
<laughs> Some guy I, sitting there watching. I should have gone over there. Yeah. Well, that match had finished. Oh, uh, I see. Vardanian won I got uh, you. quickly. I got you. Next time I'll know. I'll run over to the other. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, but but that match had finished about the same yeah, time your match. Finished. I'd much rather be here contradicting <laughs> you than than anything else. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, now that's gonna uh, it's gonna help one, two, and make the bar. I think that's all he got. Huh? There's just yeah. no other no no other alternative. That's tautological when I say no other alternative. Now that's it. <laughs> you could just as soon roll something else. I mean, would just as soon that Arf had rolled something else. Hit a second one? I would. Yeah. I mean, he's already timed. You got that many checkers back. Just go for it. You could win a gammon for the match, but... It <laughs> Also, hitting two gives you more time to remake your points. Yes. Hit and make the bar. Hit and make the bar, yeah. I guess, right? That's, you that's, could make the five. Might even hit and make the five, Phil. Uh, now, this, this is probably right. What should it say? It is right. Yeah. yeah. Hit and make the bar. <laughs> Once in a while, your instincts are right. <laughs> Ooh, this is a fun play. The creative. A little too creative. Yeah, but he, he may well want that anchor, though. <laughs> I don't think so. I think what's the anchor... The, what's it? 13, 11, 11, 7. No, so I it's, think, it's, I, it's I the think, bar. Yeah, whoa, I think, whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah. What, what is this? 11, 6, 2. That's a 0, 68 error. <laughs> The reason this can't be right is I've never seen that play. <laughs> if I, once, every time I see a play I've never seen before, it's very rarely right. <laughs> That's the play. Nothing, hard, no wrong, nothing wrong with looking. <clears throat> it's a good roll. Mm -hmm. Another good roll comes out, and I would come up. Well, he's right. I would have come out. Coming up is a tie. Man, another thing, and just as an aside for the for the viewers. You were talking about all the staff and associates uh, Patrick has brought in here. You probably also noticed, I mean, there's about a film production crew of about 16 people in here That's taking amazing. pictures, interviewing people, um, photojournalism of every sort. And they're doing interviews all over the place, too. Yeah, so mm. it's amazing. They're going to do a documentary on the... Uh, on the tournament and actually uh early this afternoon five or six o'clock uh dubai tv was here doing some coverage and so forth so it, it's getting uh it's getting some great exposure i'm telling you everywhere i look backgammon is on the up it's growing i gave a lecture in new york at a private club two nights ago 64 people with standing room only from just one private club what, did you stand in for Mochi or something? They, <laughs> they misspelled my name. They, they spelled it Mochi. That's right. <laughs> that was good, Bill. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> hey, you got to be able to take it when you dish it out like there I do. There you go. Baby. <laughs> All right. And this Ooh, is, uh... I, I make my five point. It's wrong. Well, only wrong by a little bit. I would have come in and made my five point. It's wrong by 2%. 
I mean, th these are, there's so many permutations. Oh, so these are millions. impossible to play well. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think that now I like this because he's he's crashable. If you can prime him well enough and untime him, whoops! <laughs> Never hard mind. to do against three anchors. Never mind. <laughs> You do not make the ace point here. That's the last thing you do. That's the kiss of death in these positions, is to make your ace point. You'd rather get hit and recirculated. Ah. Six, five. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I'd go ahead and start that. And uh... well, he's only going to hit you with a three. He's not going to hit you with the other two numbers. Hit again. <clears throat> May as well come in and hit. Be consistent. Come in and hit. Go for the crash. Wait for your opponent to roll double fours or double fives. But a reef is not cooperating. This is such a fun game. This is close to my Pasco game and variation. I just love this. This is a. I just love this. This is an interesting one, and it's been a long game, and it's going to be a much yeah. longer game. <clears throat> I have no clue how you play that. Uh, I think you played made a good play. <clears throat> Set of fours. Now that's that's a nice. Nah, it just doesn't do much of anything. It actually doesn't helps. do much of anything, but... Uh, actually hurts his timing. He he's actually, Hurts his timing, he's but... actually helped the reef there. Might not help... Uh, our, now, that's a nice roll for oh, Arf. Nice yeah. and slow. And by the way, it was there's another play that was close. That's amazing. Getting off that ace point so you don't get hit and recirculated there. It was really close. Shocked me. I thought the, I, I thought the five point was automatic, too. So there's no camera on us, huh? We can make faces and anything we, we want? We can make faces and all. Oh, if, good. if they take a break or whatever, Tara might switch ah, over to the uh, it's different from Mont commentator Carolina. cam. But okay. uh, for now, they're spared looking at us. That's good. I don't have to comb my hair and shave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'd much rather look at Arif and uh, uh -huh. Aikut. They're, uh, you know, they're young, nice-looking guys. They're not... They got Justin Knoll on the wrong side of this. He's the handsome guy. And, he, and he's very good at commentary, too, but he's so good at transcribing. We need him. That's a hard You know, job. and one thing that's good about Justin is he's so versatile. You know, one, he's a good player, a good teacher, whatever, but he can transcribe, he can commentate. Yeah. Um, he's just a jack of all trades. In well, offense. you're leaving out the most important thing. He's very funny. And he's funny. I love his <laughs> wry sense of humor. Yeah, he's got a great sense of humor. He's almost got that English sense of humor now that he's moved to London. I like this play. Now is the time to break from the back. And he didn't have to. And I think it's a... I like it. So, hit. You don't need that point anymore. Oh, it's wrong. You don't hit. Seven floor, six floor. Wow. That's interesting. Wow. You don't hit. I was taught you're always supposed to hit whenever you can. I, I, I would <laughs> play this. I, think. I would have too, in a second. I would be afraid of crashing with double twos or something if I didn't. I guess you had enough timing. 
He went to the ace instead of hitting the second checker. He's trying to recirculate. It's a very hard game to play. It's extremely difficult. By the way, I'm not even sure Extreme Gambit plays it right without rolling it out. Right. I mean, that's... Uh, and I think they've refined it with time, but it's historically been one of uh, Extreme Gambit's weak points yeah. playing... Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, there are there are several like people this. I would bet over over Extreme Gambit in this particular game, and some of them are here. Oh, yeah, sure. Mochi and <laughs> Nesvat, who's great at these games. Jim Pasco, if he was here, Svobodny's here. He plays these incredibly well. I didn't look at the bracket. Did Svobodny enter the main turn? He never enters the main turn. I know he normally he's a waste doesn't. Of his time. No, he's not in. He's, he's too busy looking for guys like me to play. <laughs> I was surprised to see him show up. but uh, uh, Me too. It is relatively close. He lives in Monte Carlo now. So. Now this is going to... now It's going to start taking form now. Yeah. Because Arf's going to start... You know, like, he can make a fourth point over there. He'll sure. have a, a good board and it's getting tougher and tougher to... Tiptoe through the tulips yeah. trying to bring this home. By the way, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but if he had not doubled, it would still be a take now. I mean, so <laughs> 26 rolls later, it never should have been doubled. And I if think things got uh, really good, you could have doubled them out. Sebastian, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how he pronounces his last name, Kush or something of that nature. He says, why did... Never get it that if you trust XG blind with all the moves, why not you trust him in back games? And I think the answer to that is historically, with rollouts and play and experience, people have learned that XG generally extremely good, except in back games. And, uh, yeah. Snake back games is, is, is terrible. But, uh, well, back games and containment games are two areas that. Ex uh, that Xavier has recently improved. Okay, is this a recube? Wait, stop! Don't roll too fast. Two, Look at this. He doesn't whoa, even whoa, think about whoa, it. Whoa! It's a redouble. He and he didn't even think about it. Oh my goodness! I would have really given that some thought. It was really thin, it but was, I, th I think you're right. You got to stop he, and uh, think about he, it. He had a triple shot, uh, a developing board, uh, and, and I don't think his covers was duplicated either. His four four was not duplicated. I right. I really would have been. Okay, he's happy he didn't recube now, but I, I just I, I just step on out. I mean, but how do you play that fast in such a critical point um, of the match? Um, you know, and I haven't even be, been paying that much attention. But they both. This has been such a long game, such a complicated game. They're not in time crunch critical territory, but they're both down a uh, minute forty and a minute and two fifty two. Yeah. Look at this, four checkers on the bar. Ooh, that's a big, big three. Huge. Yeah, but, uh, whoa. Did he not recue because he thought he was too good, maybe? He rolled so fast. Maybe he thought he was too good. That's that's possible. But it, what couldn't, it wasn't anywhere near too good. It was just barely a recue. And a big take. Okay, now he's... He, he needs he a needs three. He needs three point. He needs a three. Close oh, to, wrong guy to roll. Close <laughs> enough. Okay. Here's where we need the three. A two, okay. Okay, he needs to make that point. This is no longer a great 2-5 back game, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not... Uh, I might have been tempted to do that. Too. I love that two play. I, I love it. that play. I didn't look. Was it right? Plus, but, you don't. Uh, yeah, it's right. You don't have to worry about clearing it later, too. Right, and you, it was very and, sharp and of him to see that. You had, uh, you know, him with two in the yeah. air. You had some time to to try to get around. Very, very sharp to see that. Yeah, pick and pass. Even Same you, principle of yeah. just uh, trying to along. get around with him riding in, in the air. What a great cube I could gave him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> uh oh ten, ten minutes ago, you didn't say that. No, well, ten minutes ago, we were looking at a gammon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is this is uh well, it's gonna be all or nothing. Three, right? Play the three first. So you want the spare there, that's it. And take the six off. Even though it's out at the top, you want that spare. Otherwise you got a real problem playing twos. Good play. He played, made a very good play. Only high doubles here is what you're afraid of. That's a good roll. Nice roll. Take two off. Okay, keeps, I like yeah, that. Keeps it even on the back. He, uh -huh. he couldn't last time. He could this time. So backgammons don't matter. Backgammons don't matter. He's just he got just to... He wants to win a gammon. He doesn't leave a shot and get hit. He needs to get... He'd like to get a, a checker or two off of the two points so that he might can... Uh, yeah, trap. And trap. Yeah. There's a chance to do it. No. Okay, you okay. got to take him. Well. Wow. Yeah, here we go. So he should take at least one off. Let's one's see. One's got to go. Oh, no. no. Why don't you do one? I guess there's no way you would move, move the second one anyway. It didn't matter. There it is. Aces are history. Boom. Uh, uh, what well, a, aces. What, what a fine double I could gave him to win this match. And uh, shows you what I know. That's it. That's it. That's it's a ball game. Rosie O'Donnell is in very the good. Building. And by the way, after he gave the cube, I thought he played very well. Well, uh, he did carve it on down to he, five ninety three. Yeah, but he played that game, a very, very hard game, very well. He didn't play it perfectly. Nobody plays the game perfectly. But I really, my hat's off to I could. He deserved.